This is the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex. It's Samsung's good looking new all in one laptop with the pen packed right in. And today we're gonna be taking a look. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals, illustrators, designers, people who are making their way outside in this nice weather to do a little decorating. I had the chance to play around with Samsung's Galaxy Book line of laptops and Chromebooks at CES this year, and these are some really eye-catching notebooks. Of course, the one I was really interested in was this one. This is the Galaxy Book Flex. It runs Windows 10. You can see that the S Pen, it tucks in right here along the side, and, and the specs for this are really good considering it's a two-in-one Ultrabook. On paper, it looks like a pretty good choice for illustrators who want a laptop that they can draw on. And now that I've gotten my hands on and been able to use it, I can confirm that, yeah, it's a really nice device. A quick note here, you will see me drawing throughout this video using a different S Pen. What? I'll talk about this in the drawing section of this video more, but I'm using the S Pen from the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. Why? Well, it's a wider pen. It's just more comfortable to hold for long drawing sessions. Like I said, more on that later, but if you want to know more about S Pen replacements, I'll link some below in the description. I would like to thank today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. It's a popular turn-based RPG with a heavy emphasis on character progression and dungeon crawling. There's a huge roster of unlockable characters and 16 different factions, like orcs and dwarves, undead, high elves, and many more. And yes, I was pretty pumped to get my first undead death knight. Although he's only a one-star recruit, so he's on the back bench for now. My favorite character is this war priest. She's got a three-star rating and is part of the Sacred Order faction. Her main power Power Admonish has a freeze debuff stat. And this is very important to me. She's also got Divine Light, a healing spell that casts over the entire party. They're rolling out a new tag arena feature, and that is the next level of player versus player battles. Instead of a single four versus four battle like the classic arena, it's actually a series of three versus four battles. And FYI, since this is all new, I hear the developers are giving out some pretty sweet rewards for anybody who ranks highly. If you want to check out this game it is free there are links down below in the description by using that link if you are a new player you will get 200,000 silver plus one free champion Grinner but hurry because these rewards are only available for the next 30 days it comes in two sizes, a 13 inch model and a 15 inch model. I sprung for the 15 inch model because one, it's a bigger screen and two, it comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM instead of the eight gigabytes that come in the 13. Here's the crazy part. It's only a $50 upgrade to go from the 13 inch to the 15 inch. That's insane. I would expect a jump like this normally in size to be what, $150, $200 more, $50, what a great value. Both sizes of the Galaxy Book Flex are running Intel's 10th gen Core i7 processors. It is a great looking QLED display on this thing. It is only full HD, that's 1920 by 1080, which is a little surprising, but overall it didn't really bother me much. But it was a noticeable downside to an otherwise very premium feeling laptop. The screen gets pretty bright, it gets pretty dim, it has an outdoor mode, so if it's not bright enough, you can really bump that up. And it works pretty well, although it is a glossy screen, so you get a lot of reflection when you're outdoors, but still, you know, it's usable. One of the benefits of that QLED screen is it's supposed to be more battery efficient. Samsung says you will get about 19 hours of battery life. I have a beef with how the industry measures battery life in laptops, and this isn't directly Samsung's fault. But like most laptops that I test, I don't get anywhere near the advertised hours, in this case, 19 hours. I spent about three hours drawing on this while filming, and it it drained about half the battery. I didn't have all the settings or the brightness cranked up all the way either, but I would say on average, the way I use this laptop, I would get about six hours of use. We also have a 512 gigabyte SSD drive and a micro SD card slot if you want to add more storage yourself. You may have also noticed that Samsung is selling an alpha version of this with lowered specs. One thing to keep in mind is if you're looking to use this for illustration, that alpha version does not have the S Pen packed in with it. And that doesn't mean you can just go out and grab an S Pen and use it. It needs the sensors in the screen to work properly. It's one of the areas that they cut in order to keep the cost down. 
Let's take a look at the design. Samsung has really been upping their design game in recent years. And as a designer, these are things I notice. And if I'm gonna be dropping a lot of cash on a laptop, I want it to look cool too. And this really does look cool. It is hard to believe that this beautiful piece of hardware is coming from the same company that just a few years back was handing their design team photos of Apple's hardware and saying, do this. I love the royal blue look here. I love the shiny chrome edges all of that, the seams, the way it all fits together. It looks fantastic. There are a couple little quality things that don't quite hold up to say a Surface or a MacBook. For example, the hinge is a little bit flimsy. The keyboard is good enough, but it doesn't feel as good as say a Surface keyboard. One of the nice things about that hinge though is it allows you to do a full 360 flip, turning this into a tablet. And they snuck in some nice extras too. Obviously having the pen tucked into the device is really cool, but they also made sure that the USB-C ports along the side were Thunderbolt. And they also managed to add in wireless charging to the trackpad. I thought it was kind of nice to to have. It's not something I'd charge my phone on because if I'm leaving the room, I'm taking the phone with me. And if I'm in the room, having the phone right there where my hands are laying wasn't best. But for charging my headphones while I was out and about, it, it worked pretty well. Also on that 15 inch, they managed to squeeze in some number keys along the side of the laptop. It worked. I was worried about my hands being slightly off center when I was typing. And after a little while, I pretty much got used to it. They did shift that trackpad off center a little bit so that your right palm wouldn't be sitting directly directly on top of it. One of the design elements that I didn't care for, and you probably know where I'm going with this, was that chin. Look at that chin. A chin on a laptop is normal, but this is extreme. And it was compounded when you flip it around into tablet mode, it looks even bigger. Same thing if you flip it into tent mode to watch movies or whatever. Does anybody still call it tent mode? Nobody, nobody ever called it tent mode? All in all though, I gotta give Samsung props for really making a different looking laptop that is pretty well built. For permission, no. All right, let's get to the drawing experience here. This pen is a Bluetooth pen and it is charging up when you're storing it inside the laptop. But it's key to point out here that you do not need the battery in order to draw with it. That battery is for the Bluetooth features that Samsung has been putting into their S pens lately. On the phone where most of the default apps are Samsung's apps, the Bluetooth features are fairly useful. In this case, I had to do some Google searches to figure out where exactly can I use these Bluetooth features on the laptop. Turns out you could take selfies with the 720p webcam. Okay, okay, who cares about the Bluetooth features? We need to get to this pen, the S Pen. It uses Wacom's EMR, so you get all the pluses and minuses that come along with it. The big plus, a great drawing experience. You get pressure sensitivity, you get accuracy, all that stuff you expect from a Wacom stylus is right here. The downside is that palm rejection. I, I feel like I talk about this all the time when I'm using Wacom pens, but it is a thing. Even if palm rejection works 98% of the time, that means you're oftentimes accidentally landing your palm on the screen turning on, turning off a layer, changing layers, leaving marks, accidentally zooming. It doesn't happen a lot, but it happens enough to notice. This is also a really thin pen. It makes sense because obviously you have to tuck it into the side of the device, but I don't like using a pen that small for really long stretches of time. It's just not comfortable to hold for hours and hours on end when you're drawing. The good news here is that any S Pen that Samsung makes and a bunch of other Wacom EMR pens are gonna work perfectly fine here. Which ones work? Well, that, that gets a little confusing. I think if you pick up anything that says S Pen, you're gonna be in great shape. There's a lot of Wacom pens that work, but not every Wacom pen, like the Pro Pen 2 isn't gonna work here, even though that's really comfortable. I would just say stick with an S Pen if you're looking to get something as an alternative to what comes packed in. The tip of the S Pen is a little bit rubbery. That grips the screen pretty well. It is a smooth glass screen, so it does help it not slide out of control. It's not my favorite drawing field, but it's a heck of a lot better than just hard plastic on smooth glass. And after you use it for a day or two, it's gonna feel pretty normal to you. This is the first time I've used a two-in-one where the hinge allows me to go 360 degrees. I know they've been around for a while, but this is new to me. As far as drawing angles, the the only one that really worked for me was the laptop sitting flat on a desk. The hinges are good laptop hinges meant for opening and closing, but in no way are they ever going to be able to hold the weight of your hand if you set it up in tent mode. Still not calling it tent mode. And then of course the downside there is if the keyboard is flipped over, if you're using a program that requires keyboard shortcuts to get a good drawing flow going like Photoshop or Illustrator, you're going to miss that. 
The size is interesting here. For a laptop, 15 inches is a great screen size, but I hadn't thought much about it as a drawing tablet. It's cool when you're putting it on your desk, but it feels really big if you hold it like a drawing tablet the way I would say hold my 12.9 inch iPad. It's a really nice size for Windows apps in particular because you want all that extra screen real estate for your tools and your tabs and your layers and all that sort of stuff. Even though the 15 inch is only $50 more, if you plan on using this in your hands, maybe sitting on the couch instead of sitting at a desk, I could see a lot of folks springing for that 13 inch because it's just going to be easier to hold for long stretches. Like most tablets, turning this around is also going to change your screen rotation. So if you want that chin at the bottom instead of at the top, you could totally do that. Or if you just want to go crazy and go into portrait mode, you can draw that way as well. For permission, no. All right, let's talk about the pros and the cons. I think the biggest pro here is that drawing experience. You are getting that Wacom pen. You're getting it on a really nice screen. It really does feel pretty good. Nice crisp lines good pressure sensitivity, nice accuracy. I also think this is reasonably priced. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. $1,400 is not reasonably priced. That is a lot of money. I get it, you're not wrong, but look at what you're getting. You're getting a touch screen, you're getting a pen packed in, you're getting an i7 processor, you're getting a lot of storage. I know that $1,400 is a lot of money, but you're getting a very, very capable computer here that has a lot of the features that illustrators and designers are looking for. The cons, this didn't really affect me too much, but I noticed some people were talking about how the fingerprint reader takes up a good portion of the shift key on the right hand side. I tend to use the shift key uh, on the other side of the keyboard, so it wasn't that big of a, of a deal for me. But that is something you should be aware of and something that might take a little bit of getting used to, especially if you intend on doing a lot of writing on this thing. Another con is the RAM. And actually 12 gigs of RAM is actually pretty good for the 15 inch, only eight gigs for the base level, but there aren't a lot of configuration options here. So what you get is what you get. There's not a lot of room to kind of go up. I know a lot of people would want to go up to 16 or 32 if they're doing, you know, a lot of work that requires them to have a lot of apps open at once. Looking at the Surface Book 3, when you start to spec that thing up, you really see the price start to balloon and increase tremendously. I would have loved to have seen Samsung have some higher configurations for people who want to go with a better end, similar kind of laptop-y, draw -y experience, but for a lot less money. I've been really impressed with what Samsung is doing here lately with their phones, with their tablets, with their laptops. The hardware has really been top notch. It, it does feel a step down from some of those premium things, just some of those little build things. But overall, the look and the design is solid and is good. It looks fantastic. This is not only a great looking two-in-one, but it's a very well-performing two-in-one as well. And when you look at the price, it's a good value. So that is the Samsung Galaxy Book Flex. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.